Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the feature race at Santa Anita on Saturday. It's the baffle, and we're going down the hill at six and a half furlongs. Some nice three-year-olds on the turf. Carded is race number seven. Let's take a look at this field. Stay hot is the number three, five to two on the morning line. Already a graded stakes winner. Came widest and fastest to win the Cecil B. DeMille. Kicking off the season off a two-and-a-half-month layoff while cutting back in trip. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think he's he's the clear horse to beat in here, Dan, in my opinion. We'll see if dropping back um, to six and a half furlongs works against him. We'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector because that could be key for a horse like Stay Hot who needs to be a relatively a fast pace to do some damage. Hard-headed, trying turf for the first time. This horse has some early gas. The seven charge for gold showed speed in mile races, and he figures to be close again. Wasn't sure how this pace was really going to play out there, but I guess we'll see. Certainly the one hard-headed switching surfaces here could show speed from the ramp. Hard-headed won his second lifetime start on dirt at Churchill Downs, then went through the auction ring, was purchased for $135,000 and made dividends right away, winning on dirt, going six and a half for new trainer John Sadler. You look at this pedigree, Oscar performance out of an English channel, Mayor, it's all grass there. It's all turf, this pedigree. So it's this horse to me is very uh, interesting switching surfaces here. I thought he actually looked really good winning his first start for Sadler last time. He got a good trip in that race, but he also finished that race off very nicely. It was another move forward as far as buyer goes. Um, listen, I don't, I wouldn't be thrilled to take the three to one morning line on him, but I think this horse is pretty dangerous in here. The final boss, the number two, won his turf debut in his second lifetime start, going six and a half, albeit over the straight course at Santa Anita. They tried him in the Eddie Logan last time out, and I just not sure that was the right way to handle him. And look at me criticizing Frankie Dettori. This horse broke well, looked like he was in a good position, could have gotten the spot the winner wanted. And then on the backstretch, just sort of lost all position, was basically last on the outside turning for home, and then ran on a little bit belatedly. I think it's too early to give up on him. Yeah, I, I won't argue with any of that. I mean, I didn't. I can't say that I loved this horse, but um, your take on his most recent start um, is not one that I am going to argue with, especially at the price that this horse could be in this race. Stay Hot is the number three. This horse ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. He showed some speed that day. was up close to a fast pace and tired. He was taken off the pace in the Cecil B. DeMille. He had to swing about six, seven wide, turning into the stretch, and he is flying down the center of the track to win it. He's earned respectable buyer speed figures in all three turf starts, and it's really all a matter of is going down the hill at six and a half a little too sharp for him. Yeah, that, that does seem like the main question. He, he was really good in this race. He had to give away a lot of early position here. I think they were concerned about getting caught wide, so they just grabbed him early and took him back um, and gave away a lot of ground. He still finished really well. He, the thing is, Dan, off his, based on his prior two turf races, he's way more tactical than that. He could actually get a good trip in this race. Speaking of tactical, the number four, Hedwig, seems to fit the bill. He's a very professional son of McLean's music. He's won two of three lifetime starts. Here's his most recent score. Five-eighths of a mile at Del Mar, sat the pocket on the backstretch, eased to the outside, forges by this leader. It was a good trip, but it was nice to see him finish it off the final 16th. He's going to get the job done here. I thought he ran pretty well in this race. He did get a good trip, but it's a, it's another good performance from him i this horse's debut was really good at ellis park and he ran great in that kentucky downs race i know he he didn't hold on to a lead in the stretch there but he ran well that day and the horse that ran him down boat no i'm not so sure that he wouldn't be favored in this race Always on K's only lifetime win came on dirt. That was four starts back. They've tried him on turf with varying results in the last three races. The best effort coming two starts back, going five eighths, finishing second to Hedwig in the race we just saw. They tried him in the DeMille. It didn't work out. I'm taking a wait and see approach. Yeah, maybe he just didn't want to stretch out last time and it didn't have as much to do with the mile distance. Dan, I don't know. He, he was pretty bad last time. Um, the flip side of that is two starts back in the Hedwig race. He actually ran pretty well in there. He had a lot of ground to make up through the stretch, and he was really closing at the end. Voltage looked pretty good winning his second lifetime start. That was his turf debut going a mile and then ran okay in the Del Mar Juvenile Turf behind Endlessly, who might have been the best two-year-old turf horse in Southern California last year. He ran against Endlessly in the Zuma Beach two starts back, and he didn't run as well. Was it a situation where he was just too close to a fast pace that day, or did he just sort of lose his form? Yeah, maybe. I, who knows? But it, something went wrong with him there. He certainly didn't run well, and he did get a little break after that. And then it's kind of interesting when they came back this year, they tried him on dirt uh, to no avail. I, I don't know, man. I get that um, his two most recent turf starts, maybe they were just way too tough for him, and this is a better spot. I personally didn't like his, his turf debut when he, when he broke his mate. I think he beat a bad field that day. 
charged for gold one sprinting going five eighths in his debut at Del Mar. He's cutting back off a couple of route races. He set a pretty fast pace when Stay Hot ran him over in the Cecil B. DeMille. You might want to give him that race. This race I might not be as forgiving for in the Eddie Logan, where he made the lead in the rail pretty easily. He comes off the inside. The winner just had a perfect trip coming up the inside. On the far outside, you see Stay Hot just belatedly staying on. He's only going to pass one horse. Uh, but maybe turning back in distance is just what the doctor ordered for change for gold, especially if she can stay, he can stay close to a moderate pace. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's just, he's only second best in this race, and I didn't really see a big excuse for him. Um, I don't mind them cutting him back in distance. I think his speed does play here. Um, so maybe it all works out, but he's not one of the horses I was interested in betting on in here. Let's take a look at our top picks for the baffle. Stay hot looks like the horse to beat right now. Hedwig is the horse perhaps with the most upside, and that's where you're going to go. Yeah, I'm going to try Hedwig in here. I do think Stay Hot is the horse to beat in here, uh, but I'll give Hedwig one shot in here. I just didn't love Final Boss's trip last time out. He's only raced three times. I thought his race two starts back was a little bit better, and I think he can stay within range. He'll be a giant price in this race, uh, so maybe we can make some hay with him. Two four seven three. Mike's going four three one five. It's the Baffle at Santa Anita on Saturday. Good luck.